Welcome. In this lecture we're going to talk about gas lift hardware. So the image on the screen shows a gas lift injection system and processing facility. So typically the gas that is used for gas lift is taken from uh, the fluids from the production stream, from whatever is produced uh, from the reservoir, from the wells. And typically the gas follows the same path that it normally would, uh, separation and then gas processing. And then when I have the gas ready for export or for reinjection into the reservoir, I might take part of that gas to use gas lift. And here it enters the gas lift distribution system. Then that consists of a pipeline or flow line, depending how far away my wells are from my production facilities. Then I have a distribution manifold in which I can split to several groups of wells, depending on where they are located, or to different to individual wells. In each one of these lines, I might have a metering uh, instrument just to be able to know how much is going through each one to each well or to each group of, of wells. And I also might have a choke or I have a control valve in which I can control uh, how much is flowing to each well. Then further, going to the well, then we have um, that the gas is injected through the annulus. And then at some point in the tubing, you have some special equipment installed that allows to for the gas to go from the annulus inside to the tubing and then flow up. And it's only when you reach certain pressure that then this device opens and allows the flow from the annulus all the way to, uh, to inside the tubing. So we're going to focus now on this component, how it looks like and what, how does it work. So here you see on the, on the screen, you see the red is the gas, is, is the annulus filled with gas. And uh, this is uh, will be here will be the wellhead, and this part will be the, towards the formation. And uh, it, it, this uh, the the figure in gray or the all the part in gray here is uh, the gas leaf mandrel. So essentially, it's uh, threaded to the tubing, so it has tubing joints above and below. So it's part of the tubing string, and it has uh, an area internal area that actually increases, and you have some sort of a pocket here. So the gas leaf mandrel essentially it's uh, this is one type. There are also different types. I will show. Uh, we'll talk a bit to towards the end, but this is part of the puzzle. And then the other part is the gas leaf valve. So essentially, uh, the valve is this component that goes inside that pocket. So how the normal in, in normal um, operation, the gas from the annulus will go through these holes into the valve, and then inside the valve, after the some pressure is reached then it will open and then it will flow towards here downwards and then it will enter the production stream flowing through the some nozzles that you have at, at the at the this nose of the valve and you have uh, some set of uh, seals that are made just to avoid that there will be bypassing of the valve that you will it will go through this small annula, uh, annulus uh, and will uh, escape leak through it <clears throat> So this is uh, one image taken from a catalog from Slumberger, just a, a bit more realistic, but essentially depicts the same thing. The thread at the top and at the bottom is called a side pocket mandrel because it has a pocket on the side. And here you see the, the pocket in which you have the valve. This is how it looks like on, in, uh, in real life. And you see it's part of the tubing string and it's kind of sticking part of it out, the part where the valve is going to be. So one advantage this has is that it allows me to retrieve valves, to put valves and retrieve depending if I change, for example, the opening pressure is going to change or if the valve gets eroded with time, I have to change it or if I have to replace something, then this system is made for that because I can reach it from the inside, I can send some equipment on the inside, for example, with wireline or with tractor, and then I can simply replace the equipment there. Okay, so the valve looks uh, like that. Here, make uh, just notice that we don't have the top of the valve. The top of the valve, typically, we have a neck, which is made for fishing, taking out of the valve. It looks something like that. We're going to see uh, briefly how it looks, how it works. But essentially, the main part of the valve looks like that. Make it a bit smaller. Okay. So this is the openings that are in contact with the annulus, and so this will be exposed to annulus pressure. This is a bellow, a metallic bellow, and here you have a chamber which is preloaded with some pressure with nitrogen. So in normal conditions, if the pressure in the annulus is low, this is going to be pushing all of this structure all the way down and making this bowl to be in touch with this uh, seat. But then when the pressure in the annulus increases to some level, 
uh, that give, comes given from the, this uh, bellow and comes given from the pressure that you have inside. So then this part might be pushed up. Here you have a no-go shoulder. That's how much it can open, which is simply the balls retreats from the seat. And then it flows down and then it flows through, through this uh, one-way valve. And then it flows through these nozzles that you have. And after it goes through the nozzles, then it goes through this lower part of the mandrel and then it joins with the production fluid. So this is one type and it's uh, called IPO, which stands for injection pressure uh, operated valve, which means that whatever pressure I have in the annulus is what is regulating when this is going to open. But I might have another type in which is simply no pressure regulation, simply when I start to inject from the annulus and if the pressure in the annulus is greater than the pressure in the tubing, then I will have flow. Like in this case, go through the holes, then go through this uh, section and then go through the check valve and enter. So how uh, these valves are put into the, when I have a, a, a side mandrel, um, then I can retrieve the valves and change them during the life of the field. Here you see it's a series of steel pictures that uh, I have a special tool, might be using wireline. And here I have the pocket. In this case, the pocket is empty. I installed without any valve initially. And uh, then the, uh, the tool is lowered to the mandrel, all the all to that depth, then it's pulled up. And then when it pulls up, you have a mechanism that makes it actually, there is a spring that pushes the valve outside. First orients the, the tool, just that it's on the right place for inserting the valve, and then also it makes it stick out. Okay, then after that, you insert it into the pocket. You maybe have to hammer a little bit. And then after that, you uh, detach the tool from the neck, from the valve, and then finally you, you can pull up. And then you repeat the process for as many valves you need to install. Here in this YouTube link is an animation. Uh, I'm not going to show it here, but if, uh, it's much clearer than to see the sequence of steel pictures. But this is the tool. In this case, you have the valve and this goes with wireline and it's a very simple sequence of uh, uh, operations that I have to do to put the valve back. Okay, so lower, pull it up and then lower it down finally and then disconnect. So this is more details how, um, how um, inserting the valve, the, the mechanism, how it works. So you see this is the valve, this is the top of the valve. I'm not plotting anything of what is below. Here below you will have the, the chamber, you will have the bellows, you will have the, um, the check valve, etc. Okay, but this is the top, this is the latching mechanism. Um, it's called the fishing neck. So here you see in gray is the, the, the fishing tool is fixed and is connected to the blue part okay you insert it in the in the pocket and then initially it cannot pass because you have a diameter here this uh, wedge is actually making is bigger than the diameter of the pocket so it cannot enter so when you try to push it down uh, what happens is that there is a spring here that is pushing that wedge down but then that spring gets compressed and the wedge moves up and up, essentially, the inner part, the, dam the inner diameter is becoming smaller than what it was here. So because of that, the wedge can move to the right. And uh, after it moves to the right, then the diameter actually becomes, it's possible to pull it, to, to continue pushing it in. And then after it's in the final position, then the spring expands again, and then it locks the valve in, in place. So this is one mechanism, might be that some other people are using other uh, mechanism, but this is one example of how the valve is put in place. And you see here, this is small recess that you have, a small uh, um, uh, lock that you have there, it, you see it here on this, on this plot. Okay, now to retrieve it is a, a similar process. This, you, you connect the fishing tool to the to the neck of the valve okay and then you start what you start to do is you start to hammer up and when you're doing hammer hammering up essentially you you see here you have um, this the the red part the inner part and the blue part they are together hold by a pin okay when you start to hammer up then uh, this wedge gets in touch with uh, this um, this part and then you start to complete, uh, you continue hammering up and then this pin breaks, 
which makes uh, this uh, blue part to go up, upper, and reach this uh, no-go shoulder at the top of the of the of the fishing neck. And when you have that, uh, then um, the, this blue part also moves up. So because of that, now the inner diameter where the wedge is is going to be much smaller than what it should to for the wedge to sit tight. And now the wedge actually is going to be moved or displaced towards the right. Okay, and then you can retrieve it. So the, the movement going in doesn't break anything, but the movement going out is actually you have to shear a pin just to make sure that you pull it up. There are other designs of uh, mandrels that are not supposed to be uh, retrievable through wireline, but they are simply tubing retrievable. They are also called. So here you see one example, and you insert the valve from the surface. Uh, you insert it at the surface before uh, threading it to the rest of the tubing string. So a component we need to add for offshore whales, uh, platform or subsea, when we're having gas lift is an annular safety valve. So typically, if you didn't have any gas lift, uh, we have a, um, like a packer at the bottom of the tubing and that's uh, making sure that everything, all the flow goes either through inside the tubing or it doesn't go, doesn't flow through the annulus. We essentially, I'm isolating what is inside the tubing with what is outside of the tubing and I have a downhole safety valve. When we have um, gas lift, essentially what we have is we are making a hole and we have some positions in which I can have communication. And I might have that, actually, even though I have a check valve, I might have that it fails, the check valve fails, and actually I might reach communication of the reservoir fluids to the annulus, and then I have a bypass of the downhole safety valve. Okay, for that reason, um, typically I am required to install an annulus safety valve in which um, uh, I have uh, it, so the gas that is being injected through the annulus passes through that valve. That valve, there is a line that is keeping it all the way, all the time open. And then below that, I have all the different uh, gas lift mandrels in which I'm, the gas is entering into the into the tubing. Okay, this also has to be located below the downhole safety valve, as the, the sentence here indicates, because you don't want the line of the annular safety valve uh, of the downhole safety valve of the tubing valve go, going through the annular safety valve. Okay, here you have, um, I just wanted to show you a bit how it might work. This, uh, I don't think is a technology that is used nowadays, but it's uh, just an example taken from this uh, publication. Okay, so you see here you have the hydraulic line coming from the top. You have here that this is kind of part of the tubing. This is called located below the downhole safety valve. Okay, and if you pressurize this line, we now we hydraulic fluid, then that means that this uh, black part is going to move up. And when it's moving up, it's essentially unblocking this path. And then you have that the fluid can pass through here and then out and continue down. One thing that this uh, annular safety valve needs to have, needs to have a packer because you need to have a uh, isolation. So you need the fluid can only go through this uh, path.